Clash of Claims, one of the most recent chess tournaments being played right now, featuring Vladimir Kremnik, who's accusing many people of cheating, playing against Jose Martinez Alcantara, who's one of the people he accused of cheating, is coming to an end. Today, or in this video, I should say, I'm gonna analyze one of the games, the game I think decided the match, and uh, I'm going to share my thoughts and analyze the game with you. Before we start, with the white pieces we have Vladimir Kremnik, with the black pieces we have Jose Martinez Alcantara. Now, I must say, by now in the match, Jose Martinez Alcantara is winning by one point. And the reason why I chose this game is because if Vladimir Kremnik doesn't win this, then the gap in the match is going to be even bigger. So right now it's only one point. If Kremnik wins this game, they're going to match and it's going to be, the nerves are going to still, still be there. But if Jose Martinez Alcantara wins, then you, 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 you start feeling a little bit nervous as well. So Kremnik has to win this in order to, to close the gap and, and keep fighting. So it was a very exciting game, and I think that both of player, both players kind of knew that. So it, it, it did prove to be a very interesting game. So opened up, sorry, Vladimir Kremnik opened up with d4, pawn to d5, pawn to c4, the queen's gambit, pawn to e6, knight to f3, knight f6, and g3, the Catalan opening. In this position, bishop b4 was played. Uh, there are many things that black can play. Bishop b7, bishop g2, castles, castles, d takes c4 is the most uh, popular line that's this is what many people are playing right now another way of playing is d takes c4 which is sharper after bishop g2 a6 castles knight c6 e3 and rook b8 black is not doing anything about castling which makes this line very dynamic and what black is claiming is that black is emptying the diagonal many times you don't want this rook on a8 because it's going to be a target for this bishop in the future so you're emptying and now b5 moves are are possible this gets very dynamic very quickly for instance knight d2 all of these trades and knight g4 knight takes e4 black is still two moves away from castling which is weird to see in an opening this is all very well analyzed and it's a very dynamic opening so Pawn to g3, bishop b4 is what uh, Jose Martinez Alcantara has been playing. By the way, I don't know why I say his full name. Um, I like saying Jose Martinez Alcantara, but okay. Um, bishop d2 was played, a5, and this is the idea that um, Black has been doing. Like, Black, Jose, Jose has been playing this in the whole match. It's been working, so why would you change? Um, no normally, the most standard way of playing this is bishop e7, which I believe he also played. Um, and the reason why you would do this little dance with the bishop, bishop b4 and bishop b7, is because now this bishop on d2 is a little bit misplaced. So you would think you lost the tempo as black, but actually it's interesting. It's more it's more than that. After bishop d2, this bishop doesn't belong on d2. And in the future, knight e4, knight takes d2 might be a problem for white. Um, white played after a5, bishop g2, very natural move, castles, queen c2, uh, in the future connecting the rooks. Bishop e7 was played after a while. Castles, knight bd7, finishing development, and bishop g5. As I said, this bishop is not really well placed in d2, so Kramnik plays bishop g5. And you're gonna say, David, why why did Kramnik ju ju just develop the knight that hasn't moved? Like, this bishop has moved, this, this knight hasn't. Why wouldn't you develop that knight? Well, um, it turns out that you want to move this... For instance, if you play a sp soft move like king h1, it turns out that black is, is threatening d takes e4, Queen takes e4 and c5. And it's not even that black has equalized. Black is slightly better already. So in order to kind of counter-attack that or, or play against that, be prophylactic, which is preventing that idea, you have to play bishop g5. And the reason is that d takes e4, now you can play rook d1. And if you go c5, then this is going to be potentially very weak, but even stronger is knight a3. And um, the tension that you create, and this rook is better placed on default, all of these factors are now uh, all against black. So white is benefited by this bishop g5 clearing of the d file. That's the best way I can explain it. Other than that, you can argue that the bishop on c1 could have moved to g5 in one move. And as I said, this bishop on d2, it doesn't belong. It's going to get hit by knight e4. So why not bishop g5? Move it away. h6 was played, and it is right now on move 9 that we have a new game, as Agad Mator like saying, uh, bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, you're gonna say, David, white gave up the bishop pair, when I do that, you, you tell me off, and when I do, when Kramnik does it, then he's an absolute genius, and it might be, um, it might be confusing to understand this, but the reason why 
uh, Kramnik kind of gives up the bishop just like that is because there is some sort of lead in development White has. So it's not such a big deal for now. If White manages to 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 make the most of its little slight advantage, then the bishop pair is not gonna be such a big deal. On top of that, this bishop on c8 is gonna struggle a little bit to find a good square. But never say never. Uh, you, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more in the future. Knight bd2, finishing development, a4, occupying space in the queen side, a3, preventing black from 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 starting to create weaknesses in the queen side as well. Queen a5, which funnily enough, or or believe it or not, this queen on a5 is pretty well placed. So this queen on a5 is not going to get harassed by many of white's pieces. In fact, the only piece I see can harass it for now is the other queen, which we will see in the future, near future. And um, now black is going to connect rooks, play bishop d7, and black is getting an equal position. In fact, this is already equal. Uh, rook ac1 was played, just putting rooks in potential open files. Rook fd8, same idea, putting rooks in a... I mean, there's tension in, with these pawns, right? So that that file might open up, and it will. And having a rook on d8 is going to be beneficial. Knight e5, putting a knight in the middle, bishop d7, and e3. Now... Do you remember how I talked about this bishop being bad? It turns out that once the bishop gets to the e8 square, which is very typical of these structures, black is going to somehow force or eventually break in the center and open up the position, to which the bishop here will be happy. So now it's time for white to play knight takes d7, rook takes d7, and h4. Which is also pretty typical in these positions, according to modern engines. We didn't know this 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but now modern engines like playing H4. Alpha Zero changed the game. Um, many engines changed the game forever. So H4, the, the position is not really changing. There's not much you can do, so just improve your position a little bit. And after Rook AD8, something like E3, and then it's similar to what happened in the game, but including Knight takes E7, which is very important. But what happened in the game is that Kramnik played E3, and now after bishop e8, this bishop is going to be annoying in, 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 in later on. This bishop on e8 is not passive. It looks like it's doing nothing, but after c5, which black hope, hopes for, it's, it's, going to go alive. it's going to get alive. So bishop e8 played, uh, Kramnik plays knight d3, trying to find a good square. Another reason why knight takes d7 was good is because you also get rid of the knight. This knight doesn't really have a good square. Both of these knights want to go to e5. But after one of them get, gets to e5, what happens to the other one, right? So this knight, this knight is doing just a little bit of a passive work, which is defending c4. And Kramnik tries to find squares for both of them. Queen c3 is played, offering an endgame. Uh, this would have been interesting, but I guess Martinez just rejected it because after rook dc1, it's there's a little bit of pressure in the c file for 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 black. So Martinez said, "Well, queen a7, I keep the tension." Keep queens over the board, um, and this is in fact the best way to play. Knight f3, doing what I said. This is this, these are two knights looking for the same square. In fact, when two knights are looking for the same square, that's what we call superfluous knights, which is not ideal. You want to once again, it would have been better for this knight to get traded for another bitch, one of the knights. B6 was played, getting ready for c5. Queen e1, getting away from this c file. And this x-rays and this 94 ideas, c5 comes and now black is slightly better. In this position, c takes d5 was played, knight takes d5, and knight de5. Um, in this position, I must admit, uh, I must admit, sorry, I must uh, include or say that c4 was the hyper accurate way of playing this as black, because after knight f4, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, you're you're doing something that Capablanca talked about uh, quite, quite several years ago, which is you're exchanging pieces that don't affect your advantage. Black's advantage lies on the bishop pair. So it, trading one of the, the one pair of knights is now beneficial for black because number one, there's a there's a potential past there's a potential there's a an advanced protected pawn on c4, sorry. On c4. And um if you trade these these knights now, there's not such a big deal that now white gets e5 because it's gonna get pushed away with f6, and the bishop here is the main priority of black. So after knight takes d5, uh, you did miss the opportunity to create this advanced post outpost for the for the pawn, if you can say that. And after knight d5, once again we have superfluous knights, which 
it seems like white whatever white does it's going to be slightly worse but after after a while of, of thinking about this position it turns out that if white managed to get some knight c4 95 ideas the knights might be tricky and i remind you from the practical point of view you are playing with with in a, in a fast time control so knights do prove to be trickier in fa faster time control so maybe that's why kramnik was was keeping knights over the board pawn to b5 was played um advancing in the queen side maybe b4 is going to be a problem and it will be a problem uh dc bishop takes e5 knight d4 now this knight has found finally a good square queen b6 hinting on b4 queen, knight c2 sorry defending b4 bishop d6 knight to d3 bishop c6 and then knight d4 so in this part of the game it, it, there's a little bit of shuffling they're they're starting to get low on time and martinez alcantara is trying to find a better square for this knight for this bishop sorry and it does find it it changes diagonal so two moves ago it was on e8 now it's on b7 which is much better rook takes e8 happened rook takes e8 rook c1 fighting for the c file rook d8 which is a very ambitious way of playing as black and it's slipping away so it's 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 a little bit of a practical decision. Maybe Martinez Alcantara knew that the best way to go was probably something like rook c4 or or maybe trading. But rook d8 is a sign of, hey, I'm going to keep the rooks and I'm going to use them better than you, so I'm going to beat you. That's what I think, actually. Um, so rook d8 was played, but it, it is objectively slipping a little bit from, from, from a slight advantage. Queen e2 was played, bishop f8, so um, this is a... Okay, waiting move you don't want your bishop on d6 you want to don't have somewhere like f8 which is far away and it's hinting on b4 as well so there's no there's no problem on that 95 was played and just before or just when black finally thinks oh look this guy allowed me to play before they do it in the wrong time because 95 is threatening something it's pretty difficult to spot um black should have played knight f6 preventing that idea but b4 allows queen h5 David, why, why is this so strong? Well, f7 is weak and there's no good way of defending it. Queen c7 is not possible. Rook d7 is not possible. So there's no good way of defending it. So this was a very good practical choice by, by Kramnik. On top of that, the knight is, okay, improving on the center. But the real reason why this is strong is because queen h5 is a very strong threat. So knight f6 was necessary. Instead of that, black played b4 and now queen h5. g6, necessary. Queen f3 f5 and black has weakened the king side you don't want to move pawns like that that's that's bad for your king your king is going to get checkmated if you're black and in fact there are some lines where it will happen it would happen sorry but it won't happen because we'll see knight takes g6 was played taking the free pawn of course uh, if, if black doesn't have anything quick then black is losing in fact black tries to complicate things with bishop takes a3 which is a very good practical try and it turns out that in this position there's only one move that wins the game for white and the other ones are a little bit more murky. They're more difficult to find. Or, or to, to prove that you have an advantage. In this position, with the white pieces, you have to play queen h5. Why? Because you after root, bishop takes e1, which is what I think Kramnik, Kramnik got scared, you have 95. Once again, the only move that wins. There's not even moves that equalize. This is the only move that wins. If you don't find this, you're not even drawing. It's, 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 it's a loss. So 95... It's difficult to spot it's a backwards move and the point is that after something like queen c7 you play queen g6 uh let's say king h8 loses to knight f7 you have to give up the queen and that's obviously winning if you play king f8 then 96 royal fork and if you play queen g7 queen takes e6 king h8 and knight f7 and everything's working out for white of course it's still pretty complicated but white is winning but after rook f1, which is what Kramnik played, now black is kind of back in the game. In fact, it's equal again. Um, but once again, like they're low on time. They're, they're le less than 20 seconds. Martinez de Alcantara plays bishop b2. Very risky move because now... Because the, 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 the king who had a bishop on f8 doesn't have a bishop on f8 anymore. In fact, the best move was bishop f8. But after bishop b2, this king is starting to feel a little bit scared. Queen h5 played by Kramnik, best move. Bishop takes d4. e takes d4. Queen takes d4. And in this position, Kramnik, as I said, bishop b2 here was a mistake by Martinez Alcantara because in this position, Kramnik has, sorry, Kramnik has bishop takes d5. This is the best way of continuing. After bishop takes d5, 97 check. King g7, queen g6, king f8. You get into this endgame where you're slightly better as white. 
And when I say slightly better, it's plus one according to the engine. Now this is difficult. I understand why Kramnik might have rejected this. Uh, it was also difficult to calculate. So I would understand also if he hadn't seen this at all. And uh, the A pawn is a little bit scared, scary to, to deal with as white. But after king g8, queen g6, king f8, queen f6, king g8, you have rook c1 trying to get this rook to c7, difficult position for black because white is more active. So from this from 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 this standpoint from this point of view white is slightly better activity if it was an activity then this pawn is a little bit scary oh my goodness this pawn is a little bit scary it's not clear so going back to the game queen f6 was played uh sorry queen takes h6 was played but this is now a mistake because black freezes all this attack going on with queen f6 and now it's equal and now, not only equal, but white is struggling. White is a little bit frozen, as I said. You can't move the knight, it's pinned. And um, and the, you can't create threats very quickly. In fact, you already have to find a way to stop this pawn. Um, Kramnik played queen h5, which is a mistake. So mistakes don't come along. It's not a coincidence that Kramnik got two, 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 two mistakes in a row. It's, they're running out of time. The stakes of the match are getting a little bit more intense. Uh, queen h5 a mistake, rook b1 must have been played, and after something like bishop a8, you have to find bishop f1, abandoning the, the diagonal, like the grand diagonal, in order to get your bishop to c4, for example, a3, bishop c4, you protect this, and you're holding, which is very difficult to find, but after queen h5, which is what happened in the game, a3, you can't stop the pawn anymore, Kramnik tried knight f4, but after a2, knight takes d5, you, you can give a couple of checks, but... Uh, everything's temporary. You can't stop that pawn. H4 was tried. Queen B1, Queen E7 check, King F6. But yeah, this is desperation. And after this, Rook D1 is a threat. Um, queen takes and and Rook D1 is also a threat. And then queening. So Kramnik tried really desperately this King H2. But after a while, Martinez Alcantara managed to convert this, and Kramnik resigned. Now, after this, a couple more, in fact, several more games happened, and Martinez Alcantara did manage to win the match at the end. So, I guess, from that point of view, well done, Mar well done, Martinez Alcantara, you proved that you were not cheating, I guess. Or, I don't think he was cheating, many people think he was. Let me know what you think in the comments, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, also let, let, them, let me know. Um, and let me know how, 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 what you want, if you want me to cover any other tournaments, I'm very happy to read you. Have a nice day.